With Unreal Engine version 5.1 on the horizon, there's a handful of new audio features headed our way. So in today's video, we're going to be opening up the 5.1 development build to get a first-hand look at some of these new tools. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. So as I mentioned before, this is the development build, which means there's potential for things that we look at in this video to either be incomplete or to change before version 5.1 is fully released. So because of that, I this is just gonna be a hands-on overview of the features and uh, I won't be putting out any tutorials until 5.1 is fully released because I don't wanna start you guys off day one with any sort of misinformation. Now there is one thing that I do wanna point out. It's a small update, um, but it isn't something that I saw listed on the roadmap. And that is if we come down here and right click under sounds, uh, you do still have to enable the MetaSound plugin uh, through the plugins menu. It's not on by default, but you'll see that we have our MetaSound source just like we have currently in version 5.0. But if we come underneath MetaSound, you now see that what was originally called just MetaSound, the name has been updated to MetaSound patch. It's a small, small update, but I know that there's been a little bit of confusion between the differences between the two. So I really think that this renaming convention really kind of helps um, elaborate on what the differences between these two are. So with that out of the way, uh, first up on the roadmap is the audio parameter modulation. Now this is a feature that we currently have in version 5.0 but according to the plugin manager, this is currently listed as being in beta. Whereas uh, if we look at the plugin manager here in 5.1, you'll see that that beta tag has been removed. Now, if I'm being completely honest, this isn't a feature that I've messed with enough to know all the little nuances of. So I can't really speak as to what's being changed between the beta version and this version. Uh, it could just be that the developers have tested it enough and feel comfortable with people using it for public releases, or there may have been some actual changes. In all honesty, I'm not sure. Next up on the roadmap is the audio gameplay volumes. Again, this is a feature that we currently have in 5.0, but this time you'll see that we still have that beta tag in 5.1. I know that several folks in my Discord server have mentioned some random bugs they've encountered, such as fade in or fade out times not working correctly. And so hopefully some of those bugs have been resolved. Now, keep in mind with this still being in beta going into 5.1, there may still be some bugs in there. So if you do find bugs when you're working in the full release of 5.1, the best thing you can do is create a bug report. Uh, the team over at Epic Games has been absolutely amazing at listening to community feedback and take those bug reports very seriously. So now let's take a look at the first new feature on the roadmap, and that is the wave editor. So uh, if we come in here to our starter content, I'll just use our starter music as an example, and you'll see that we now have a new option under the right click menu to edit waveform. And this is gonna bring up a brand new UI where we actually see the waveform out like we would in a DAW. And uh, we've got some transformation options. Uh, we can either choose to normalize or we have the trim fade option. Uh, so like I said, this is just an example. So if we put our transformation trim fade, uh, we now have the option to change our start time, end time, our fade durations, whether it's in or out, and the curve of those fades. So let's just say I want it to start at five seconds. I want it to end at 15 seconds. And I want a three second fade in and fade out. So graphically, 
you can see those changes happening on the screen. We can hear those changes that are being made. And what we now have the option to do is we can use this button to export that edit as another U sound wave asset. So we'll go ahead and click on that and save it. And so now when we come into our menu here, we still have the original sound, but now we also have this edited sound. And you can hear that it fades in just like it does in our current edit. Now, I will admit that the workflow around this might be a little weird um, if this is the final version, because we you have the star here, which means there's some unsaved changes. And if we preview this, even though visually it looks okay, we still hear that edit being made. So even though I exported that as a new clip, if I were to hit save, uh, then it would also save the edits to the original file. So you may have to undo your changes or you save it. But what this is also gonna do is for those of you who are using um, library assets, say you're working with some footsteps and the file that you have has multiple footsteps on one file. So instead of throwing it into a DAW like Pro Tools or Reaper, chopping that up and then importing all those individual files into Unreal Engine, you can now just take that full audio file with the multiple footsteps, go ahead and import it, and then use the wave editor to trim up and save out those individual footsteps as needed. Next is a list of new nodes being added to MetaSounds. Now, I'm not gonna be diving into each of these individual nodes in this video, but make sure you keep an eye on my Ultimate MetaSounds Resource Guide playlist, where I will be doing a more granular exploration of each of them once 5.1 is officially released. That being said, there is one node on this list that I do wanna mention because it might just be the greatest node on this entire list. It's time to clean up those giant spaghetti monsters because 5.1 is bringing us the reroute node. Just like in blueprints, uh, you have the option to pull off and you'll see the option to add a reroute node or double clicking on the cable will actually create one right where you clicked. Now, since we're talking about cable connection, let's move on to our next feature, which is the node connection visual feedback. And um, this is something that we've always kind of had with the audio cables, uh, although now it is much more apparent. Uh, we now have the option to enable this for other inputs as well. Uh, that'll kind of help keep track of where we're going. Uh, if you've messed around with the debugging drop down menu and blueprints, you know that you can trace signal path that way. Now we have the ability to do that inside MetaSounds. We're gonna stay inside MetaSounds for just a little bit longer uh, to talk about the next feature on the roadmap, which is multi-channel audio support. Now, whether this was a coincidence or not, uh, personally, I think it's a little funny that we're getting surround sound support in version 5.1. Uh, but anyway, if we click on our MetaSounds underneath our output format, we currently, only have mono and stereo. And clicking on this in the development build, you'll see that we now have mono stereo plus quad 5.0, 5.1, and 7.1. If we were to select 7.1, you'll see that we get a whole new list of outputs, as well as we have the analyzers to go along with them. So in addition to these different output formats, you know, we need our wave player to be able to accommodate. So now you'll see that we also have some additional wave players that support these additional outputs. 
Now, one thing I did notice at the time of recording this, and I don't know if this is a feature that's coming or, or not, uh, but if we were to look at our mixers, we still only have the mono and stereo. Now, uh, just in case this happens to not be something that we get during full release, you may have noticed down here that I have a graph where I have created my own 7.1 mixer to allow us to mix the gain uh, in our newly named uh, meta sound patches. Last but certainly not least, we have the final card that is listed on the roadmap, and that is Soundscapes. Now inside the engine, Soundscapes have two different options. We have a Soundscape color, and we also have a Soundscape palette. Now if I'm understanding this correctly, the Soundscape color is going to be like your individual layers that will be inside your soundscape. So let's say for example, your scene is in a wooded area at night. You may have a soundscape color that is trees rustling. You might have a different one that is crickets chirping. And then let's say you have a third one that is a random owl making noise. So you start off with your bass sound. And then from there, you can completely manipulate it, modulate it, randomize it with a whole bunch of different options. You can change how many times it spawns. You can make it spawn indefinitely, but maybe it kind of randomizes the time, the fade in, the fade out, things like that. And then once you've got all of your colors set up, you can then come into your soundscape palette and we can add different elements so you know each of these would be the different colors and based on the settings that you chose for the colors you know whenever they start and loop and how many times they play and things like that now the soundscape palette playback conditions uh, you can actually use different tags or expressions to determine how they play, or you can trigger them by using trigger boxes. So I've got a little bit of an example set up here. I've got four small trigger boxes and each of them are set up to play a different soundscape. Now I do have custom fade in and fade out times. So as we transition from one trigger box to the next, you'll actually hear the old one fade out and the new one fade in to give us a nice clean crossfade effect. And so you heard right there at the end that I have it set up with a node that says stop playing but that stop playing node has a custom fade out time. So even though we exit, we don't hear that audio just immediately come off. We hear it kind of fade out and just make those transitions a lot nicer. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up at this look at the 5.1 development build. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited for. Uh, and as always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates and videos on this stuff. I'm having so much fun with it. Hopefully you guys are too. Until next time.